The James Webb Space Telescope, the largest telescope ever deployed in space, has successfully entered service after months of testing. It marks a major stride in astronomy and will help us understand the universe like never before. Webb will specialize in infrared astronomy. Infrared is useful as it allows you to peer extremely far away to galaxies that formed shortly after the Big Bang. The team behind Webb recently published the first infrared scientific pictures taken by the telescope, and they are breathtaking. Never before have we seen views of our universe like this, be it invisible light or infrared. These targets included several galaxies, nebulae, and even an exoplanet. While Webb's first pictures are awe-inspiring, the question now comes up, what's next after Webb? What space telescope can surpass Webb? Enter the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, or Roman for short. Roman will be an infrared and visible light space telescope, operating at the Earth-Sun Lagrange Point 2, or L2, as it allows the telescope to be far from any light reflecting off the Earth or Moon, but also to be near Earth for launch and communication purposes. But Roman isn't bigger than Webb, or really more powerful either. It will take a unique approach to in-space astronomy. Instead of being a super precise and zoomed-in telescope like Hubble or Webb are, Roman is a wide-field telescope. This means Roman can image large swaths of the sky at once. More specifically, it can image 100 times the field of view of Hubble with the same precision that Hubble can in infrared. To learn more about Roman, its goals, and why exactly a wide-field telescope is needed, nasaspaceflight.com sat down with Dr. Jonathan McDowell, an astronomer at the Center for Astrophysics. Dr. McDowell also works on the Chandra X-ray Observatory, one of the most capable X-ray space telescopes ever flown. Roman, named after NASA's first chief of astronomy, Nancy Grace Roman, will be able to see in infrared and visible light. It features a 2.4 meter diameter mirror, the same size as Hubble, which was donated to NASA by the National Reconnaissance Office. Because the telescope's mirror was already made, the rest of the mission had to be built around that mirror. As Dr. McDowell put it, forced us down the road of doing something with this nice telescope mirror that had been built for a <coughs> project uh, at the <laughs> National Reconnaissance Office that had been a spectacular failure and, and never got launched. This mirror is not that large compared to Webb, which itself has a six meter mirror. For reference, having a larger mirror generally means you can see more detail in objects, as well as be able to see fainter objects. But not having a huge mirror isn't a problem for Roman. It isn't searching that much for tiny objects. We'll get more into that later. Roman will feature just two instruments, the wide field instrument and the coronagraph instrument. The coronagraph instrument is a technology demonstrator, and a coronagraph is basically a device that blocks or cancels out the light from a star in order to see the planets around it. This often has involved physically blocking a star using an opaque object, to put it simply. However, Roman's coronagraph won't simply block out the light using an opaque object. By using a complex arrangement of deformable mirrors, light blockers, and software, the instrument will be able to essentially cancel out the light from a star using destructive interference. It can then observe any planets around the now obscured star. Coronagraphs have previously flown to space on the Hubble and James Webb space telescopes. And even though James Webb is a pretty modern telescope, Roman's coronagraph instrument will be two to three orders of magnitude more powerful in being able to make out the planets around a star. Dr. McDowell described this extreme power, saying, And so the idea is that you should be able to see a contrast of one, in, one to 10 million. That's to say mm -hmm. that if there's a star that's a brightness of 10 million and a planet that's a brightness of one, you can see that planet next to the glare of the star, even if they're only 0.3 arc seconds apart from each other, which is ludicrous. The coronagraph on board Roman will also be able to split the light coming from those distant planets to determine what gases are in their atmospheres. The coronagraph will only be used at the beginning of the mission to demonstrate the breakthrough instrument. Should things go very well with it, it may be entered into operational service around one and a half years into the mission. 
Roman's other instrument, the Wide Field Instrument, is the workhorse of the mission. It is designed to photograph wide swaths of the sky at once. It will use 18 large sensors to image targets, creating a 300 megapixel image with each exposure. Dr. McDowell explained this quite simply. Uh, but the main camera is pretty straightforward. It's just like brute force, huge field of view, lots of pixels. <laughs> Let's see what we can see. Uh, and and it has uh, a series of filters that let it uh, measure precise the amount of light in different wavelength ranges, in different color ranges. Eight different filters are available for the camera, with each only allowing certain wavelengths of light through. Roman will be capable of seeing all the way from blue light to near infrared. Now, it can't see as far into infrared as Webb can, but it can see much more visible light. The wide field instrument will be able to see 0.28 square degrees of sky in each capture, which is, again, over 100 times the field of view of Hubble. However, due to improvements in camera and mirror technology, Roman will be able to have similar, if not slightly better, precision in infrared compared to Hubble. This is huge because it means Roman can see a huge swath of sky at once in much less time than Hubble or Webb. But what will Roman even do with all this capability? What is it investigating? Well, Dr. McDowell gave us some insight, saying that Roman will be a great tool in the quest to understand dark energy. Dark energy is a theory that may describe mass distribution issues in the universe. It's something we can't quite see directly, but we can see the effects of it. One great way to study dark energy is by using gravitational lensing, where a large object, like a star or galaxy, distorts the light coming from another object behind it using its gravity. In fact, we can actually see this phenomenon happening in one of Webb's first images of SMACS 0723, or SMAX 0723 if you're so inclined. Many other telescopes can do this on a small scale with their small field of view, but Roman's large field of view will allow this effect to be observed on a massive scale. This same method will also be used to search for exoplanets, as their light can also be distorted and brightened by gravitational lensing. The study of dark energy through its effects on the universe was the main purpose of the proposed Joint Dark Energy Mission, which evolved in the early 2010s to become Roman. And Dr. McDowell brought up one last interesting tidbit about Roman. The other thing that I think is cool about it what I just read is that it can slew quite quickly. Uh, it can move to look at a different part of the sky in only a couple of minutes. He then went on to discuss why moving quickly can be beneficial, saying, That's an important piece of science if you want to look at a supernova that's just gone off or a gamma ray burst that's just gone off and see, or a fast radio burst uh, and, and image the uh, the galaxy that it's coming from and see if you can spot, you know, the star that exploded that's the counterpart to what you're seeing in some other wave band. And so, so you know, what you have is like the gamma ray satellite sees an event, sends an email to Roman, <laughs> which, <is> then, <laughs> which then, you know, tracks to it or something like that. Roman is currently set to launch no later than May 2027 on a yet unannounced commercial rocket. The future of space telescopes after Roman is uncertain. The Decadal Survey, which is basically a meeting of scientists to determine the spaceflight goals of the United States each decade, recently recommended an approximately 6 meter diameter ultraviolet, visible, and infrared observatory to be launched in the 2040s. This telescope, approximately the same size as Webb, would be a true successor to Hubble, as it could see in all of Hubble's wavelengths of light. The closest proposed mission to this concept is Louvoir B, an 8-meter telescope that would also unfold in space, similar to Webb. A larger variant of this concept, called Louvoir A, would have a 15-meter mirror. But unfortunately, the survey advised against such a large and expensive telescope, citing the infamous delays of Webb. After the recommended 6-meter scope, the survey recommended a large X-ray telescope to follow in the years after. The future of space telescopes looks to be quite interesting. Roman would be a great asset in astronomy, as will whatever telescope ends up following it. We'd like to thank Dr. Jonathan McDowell for his time. It was a ton of fun and very informational to get to sit down with him. 
You could check out his work at Planet4589 on Twitter, where he has excellent information on satellite tracking, astronomy, and more. Our complete one-hour interview with Dr. McDowell is available right now for our channel members. We only discussed Roman for about half the interview, and there are some great conversations in there on web and what telescopes he thinks should be selected next. And if you'd like some of that content to be made into a future video, be sure to give this video a like. Thanks for watching.